Oh, thank you. Um, I will copy and paste the libraries that we're going to use for if anyone wants to go the same time as me, with me. I don't know if uh, Ed could use put the script on the page. Oops. Yes, I didn't update the page yet today, but if you have a script, you could just drop it in the chat right now. All right, I will. Or if you'd like me to do it, I can probably do that for you. If you want no, to. No, no, I can do it. Go it's with your uh, presentation. I do have it handy here. Uh, I have it. I have it here. No worries. Let's okay. just send it. Send. All right. Now everyone has the script. If you want me to follow it step by step, but right. Okay. Um, and I'm going to share my screen as well. I make like a PowerPoint just to make the things more fun. Tick. All right. Tick. Right, what we are going to see today is the nonlinear regressions and growing the general laws on growing stuff. I think this is really useful in the sense that everyone is seeing my screen, right? Yep, we can see your slides. All right, thank you. This will be useful because there is no much work published about this, uh, or at least I try to find in some graphs like basal and stuff, and there is not much being done. And it's a generic law, so it's going to work almost with every plant and almost with every animal. All right? In bacteria, they change a bit, but not much. Um, I'm going to show you as well real data that I take. The data copyright is a, a bit messy, should be mine, but it's like, I, I think it's 75% mine, and then it's split like in several parts. So when I ask the question if I can like use it, they say yes, but you have to do an introduction. So there with me, it's going to be just a minute. Um, and it's nice to show off a bit. So she, the idea is this data is from this big project, but it's one part. This is the name in English, and the publication was in 2020. I just translate the name, all right? This project have, have, is a research project in Uruguay, have four components. This data is the third component, experiment two, year one, first crop, all right? And just a part of that crop. Uh, and that crop was my undergrad thesis as well, all right? What we are going to see is just the data for the chapter 6.1.1. So I send my thesis as well. I translated for to English for another scholarships and stuff. So you're interested to read it. It is it's going to be in the group page, or I can send it to you guys, whatever you want. Um okay. So I'm going to just explain a bit how is this work. Um, we did a factorial design in this experiment. Uh, we are mixing like an organic uh, source of um, nitrogen called like uh, from chicken litter and a mineral one that is urea. We mix and we did like every combination possible and we have nine treatments, okay? Of those treatments, we are going to grab four. They basically is like a witness the maximum uh, doses of nitrogen from the chicken litter, the maximum from the urea, and the maximum combination. And the thing that we did is just like take some samples, which more or less two weeks, right, uh, of the corn. And then we, in this case, we calculate uh, dry weight. We also have like um, content of like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But we are not going to use that for at least this representation. And then the idea was adjust those values to a formula to predict us to 
in this case, predict how much drying matter is accumulated in the crop. And why this is important? Because as we saw, we have like different nitrogens um, application, uh, who is not like really um, used to like uh, nutrition of crops and stuff. The nitrogen is going to basically is one of the main components of the plant that is going to uh, condition at the growth. So we can more or less sell so what is the critical point to apply nitrogen when you, we compare it all these curves, right? So in order to do that, we had to adjust the values to a formula that is here. Sounds quite complex, but you will like seeing the calculation stuff, you're going to see that it's not that complex. The thing that we are going to do is submit the data to R, and then we are going to try to calculate the A, B, C, and D values, right? And then we are going to substitute those values to have like a, the growing formula, okay? I will be um, the drying matter accumulation, and X will be the time. Um, okay, so it's going to be the time on days, right? And the shape of the formula, it will be like this: the graphical um, the graphical representation. I always say that almost every crop work this way, and if you want to as well do the same with the, the nutrient content, it's going to work more or less like. This one. There is a few exceptions. Phosphorus act similarly. It's like a really smooth shape. Still, it's just like a sigmoidal stuff. But the problem is like the absorption is mainly constant until like the senescence of the crop. And uh, peaches. Peaches is one of the other examples that work different, right? But after those, um, and cherries, sorry, cherries as well. But after those few exceptions, the rest, everything is going to grow like this. It's generic and it's well accepted, okay? For instance, how to obtain this formula? So, oh, it's not working here. And we select, we can do a linear regression, right? and how the, the data, and that could work in some things. Problems like when you do like a linear regression, you're basically driving a line, right? So it's going to be a line like this, and the R square is going to be really low. So, and as this is not a line, we actually use an R2. For that, we actually use the non-linear regressions, right? It's more or less, the same procedure is just with an extra steps and we're going to have like other shapes of curves. We're going to use this formula to adjust it, but you can use another one, right? The tool is generic. You only need the formula and um, the values to adjust it, right? There is some tricks. Uh, it's not really easy, uh, but there is like enough live um bibliography to search which variation is best for each case, right? Any question until now? I try to put like a lot of pictures just to make it fun, but I know it is so boring. Uh, any question about this? Nope. So far so good here. All right. So we pass to our Okay, um, we're going to load all these packages. I make some notes here just to let you know, guys, what is the function of every of these packages. Sounds like a lot, but we are going to just just bits of each package. And it's going to be really integrated. Uh, what happened here? Ah, okay. We are going to grab the data and read it. And we are going to split it in the different treatments, right? 
Um, I want to show you how is the data presented. The data basically is the treatment number, the doses of nitrogen, uh, two sources, the block, the day, the word sample, and the dry matter. The first day or the day zero, it will be zero, it was just seed, and then it's the data, right? So we are not going to be able to calculate a single regression because there is a lot of dispersion and to be honest, doesn't work. It will be more interesting just to do like at first treatment data, the treatment number three, seven, and nine. So we are going to adjust four uh, curves, okay? So uh, there's a couple of notes you want to do it. Uh, now that I'm thinking, if you want to do it with me, you will need the data. Um, Actually, drop the data into the chat already. Ah, oh, cheers. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, we're going to start with the first one, all right? And this is plot points. It's a function that is in this package, for sake, that is just going to allow you to easily plot the points. And then once we calculate like the... Um, the core or like the formula is going to be represented next to the points. So we run this basically as dry matter with a day in the axis uh, here. Okay. This is uh, the size basically of the dots, the color, and the data. That's quite simple to use, to be honest. And now this is the hard part, right? And it's not that hard, to be honest. We are going to create a nonlinear regression, all right? For that, we are going to use this function, NLSLM. There is two, there is as well NLS, like function, but it's not working with this formula. It's working for another one. This is kind of an extension package of this, all right? We are going to give a name to this, dry matter treatment one. And this is the formula. This is exactly the same formula that I show you in the PowerPoints, right? The only thing that I would change is instead of Y, I'm going to put EM, that is prime matter, and A, all right? But it's going to be the same time instead of X. So the idea is just put in the formula, right? Where the data is from, in this case, the treatment one, as we are going to use the treatment one. You can perfectly put us here if you don't want to have like a lot of data objects here. Just put the subset uh, function here, and it should be work. And then we have to put like the starting points, and that's a thing that you have to check in the value graphic, right? Each of these functions, in order to be adjust, you need like a starting point or points that were similar to these letters, right? that the nonlinear regression is going to um, adjust and re-verify, right? So there was a book uh, is from the States for agrostatistics from Illinois University. I haven't paid it there, so I couldn't send it to you guys, but if you need it, I can give you like the more details. They said exactly, what was the starting points, all right? So basically, A will be like the maximum data value, B, the minimum, C is a constant that in these cases is one, and D will be the median, all right? Finding this is quite hard. You have to search in the bibliography, but once you have it, it's just easy. Trace through, that's where we're going to use it. Uh, later, and this as well is important, the logarithm. Uh, this function, right, came with another algorithm, I don't remember the name, I think this uh, LM, that sometimes creates some errors in some formulas. I tried to 
Uh, when I did this in 2017, more or less, the function doesn't adjust properly. So after reading the manuals, they said that you have to use this one. That is the fair option that you have. Now, when I was rewriting this, um, I just deleted this part to see if the, the error was fixed or the bug was fixed, and it was, but it's still, I'm still using this. I don't know if it's okay or not, and it's going to depend on you guys. So I'm going to do this. It's going to create the data object here, all right? And we're going to see it. And here we're going to have the results, all right? So this is going to give you the formula and this table, all right? That is important. Basically for the estimates, what we are going to do is the A is going to be minus 241.65, but 241. In this case, it's kilograms. So I don't think that it's going to be useful, these numbers. If you are using tons, okay, um, maybe not. Uh, the units that we are using here, I forgot to tell this, is kilograms per hectare of dry matter, right? But uh, you can use it whatever you want in your experiment. So we have like the initial values to substitute this formula. Okay. Um, in the um, confidence intervals. So we have this. Herman, you like I, uh, can I jump in yeah. and say something here? Is you? Yeah, of course. You've, you've covered a um, a lot of ground, and um, this is uh, there's a, a technical theory that underlies um solving for nonlinear least squares like this we actually haven't ever covered this um in uh, this class so it's a real pleasure to see you using it in a practical way here and it's it's perfectly clear so far i just wondered if some people <clears throat> some of the details of um like uh, which algorithm and um how you uh, how you arrive at an initial estimate for some of the parameters like like the the d term uh, in there might um, be new to almost everybody in the in the chat. One of the things I wanted to mention is that um, <clears throat> there's a really good textbook that we've mentioned in here before by John Fox. Um, and he makes the uh, he's the author of the companion to applied regression, the car package in R. And uh, mm -hmm. his, his book, the applied regression in R, covers um, this and the the algorithms to solve nonlinear least squares are pretty hard. I mean, I consider them very hard myself, so I would use this as um, as a practitioner myself in exactly the same way you're using them, Herman. So again, it's really nice to see this. But I guess I would just um, I would just say that if this is new to you, that's fine because this stuff is hard. <laughs> and if you are interested in um, solving growth equations or um, this this kind of approach, I have actually seen some um, students, PhD students here at Harper, use this stuff for um, for dosing. Um, figuring out the uh, the dose of a drug or a pesticide that kills 50%, let's say, or has 50% efficacy. It's used in experiments like that quite a lot. I've seen several examples of that over the years here at Harper. Um, this is exactly what you would do. This is exactly the method you would use for it. So I just wanted to say that, that it's probably new to most people and that's okay. And if you're interested in this stuff, I'll drop a PDF um, that I, I found on my hard drive that's an introduction to this that's actually an appendix to John Car or John Fox's book. I'll do that, but carry on, come on. Good stuff so far. Well, thank you. Well, to be honest, I wanted to send some bibliography as well, so this. But when I was reading my thesis, all the reference that I used was in Spanish in this case, and I couldn't. I tried to find a book and I didn't have any time, but it will be super nice. Thank you. Um, which was, yeah, this is really useful to be honest, and to be more works like this. 
I, I, I knew a thing to do a couple of my house when I have a house. Well, what I was going to tell you, uh, well, here are like the points loaded, all right? And we have the formula. So we need two more things. It would be nice to have like the, the formula plotted here. For that, we are going to use this function, it's plot fit. Basically, I had to put the name of the nonlinear regression. Remember, dry matter treatment one, smooth through. If not, it's going to be like lines. And then just graphical parameters. Uh, yes. I think that was. Question. Somebody's raising a hand for a question. Go for it, Bruce. Oh, sure. sorry. Did you see it? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Uh, this How are you? here. <laughs> I think uh, there's a question that sh uh, should be put right now because I thought yeah. that what we are going to look for uh, is the A, B, C, and D in this equation. Equation, but I yeah. can see that they are estim estimated somehow in advance. So, could you please draw a picture what we are trying to achieve having that <clears throat> sigmoid curve mm, in mind? You want because to I, I understand that the sigmoid curve is the general model, and yeah. is it so that we are looking for the parameters of the sigmoid curve? We already have the parameters here. Um, yes, I'm going to plot the the, um, the equation then with all the stuff, but I can show it now. I think uh, I think I have it. Well, we look. What are you what you wanted to see is pa, 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 oh, I finish this pass. Uh, here. This is going to be the graph. This is going to be the equation. And I if didn't I, explain if this. I may pitch in here is I, I think what um, Prushmek may be asking, correct me if I'm oh, wrong, sorry. is how how we come on to the estimation of those uh, of those parameters in the nonlinear equation. The, the answer to that is um, probably beyond what we can achieve here in just an hour. But um, mm -hmm. but to answer it, uh, there are a number of um, ways to solve nonlinear equations like this that have multiple parameters. The way that most of them, um, the way that most of them approach it is to uh, simulate within some parameter space by an algorithm, and that's exactly what this is doing. But that's happening behind the scenes, uh, so we're we're you know we're not able to see the matrix of uh, possibilities that are going to. But we could dig into the model objects and explore that space. But yeah, it's a little beyond what we can do here. But it's a good question. Yeah, I think I didn't understand well the question. I'm sorry, uh, but you are like asking how is the math involved to grab this, or when I found these ones, like the estimated the starting points. Well, it's like just the overall logic. Uh, what is the model looking for? Uh, the, the, this DMT1 model, I think it's taking some the, um, the values from observation, yes? All right, yeah. Uh, and we've got the general shape of the curve, which takes some parameters. Yes. So what comes first? Why do we have that estimation? Isn't it something that the model is trying to arrive at? Just imagine that you are doing a linear regression mm -hmm. you know that you are looking for a straight line with parameters a and b intercept yes. and slope and uh, uh, the parameters are the effect of the model and here i can see there's some estimation of uh, a b c and d Mm -hmm. which uh, are taken as arguments by the function. So they are in advance um, delivered to the model. Uh, what What is the model uh, looking for? What is the model estimating? 
I, I think the way this is working is um, similar to um, the way you're thinking, Perjmek, but um, there may be an assumption you're making, and I'm not sure that the assumption is true. And the, uh -huh. the assumption is that um, that there, these are fixed parameters in that list assigned to the start argument there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I actually think they may just be um, a starting point, a kernel for the space that's explored. Let, let's see what the output is. I'm interested myself, but um, I think that this should work exactly like regular simple linear regression, where the thing that's being optimized is the least squares variance of the residuals from whatever line and whatever values these take. But let's ha let's have a look at what pops yeah. out here. Mm -hmm. that's OK, that's OK, I'm not stopping happened. you any longer. <laughs> no worries. Something that happened is like, for example, A is going to be the minimum of dry matter. It's going to have like, this is a, like a negative value. So it's not the same. It's just giving to the formula a starting point to start to explore what it's going to do. Another example is C, I say like, it's going to be one or next to one. And it's going 0 0.07, right? So it's not exactly one, but I had to say to the formula where more or less are going to be the points just to the formula to take. And this is like, this information are like in a heavy mathematical books. They are explaining how to do this by hand. Being that I read it and I don't remember anything, but yes, they have an explanation of how, why you actually even start the points. And there is a book, it's in Spanish as well, and I have a on paper, this uh, general matrix and linear nonlinear regressions that explain really well why you actually give these points. Well, it's like I read it like six years ago, and I, I remember the overall concepts, but I cannot give you like a detailed explanation of what. Sorry. Well, um, so with this, we're going to shape this um, beautiful line in this graph, right? And we are going to have like something less. Um, the problem is when you do like a linear regression, you're going to have something called R square. R square in concept is how much your mathematical formula or model is awkward construct, um, with the reality, or at least the points that you have, all right? It's like a goodness of fit, if it is in English. So um, that's in linear regressions, sadly, we don't have an R square in nonlinear regressions, but we have several options. So with this function, PCR gov, you are going to have uh, a list of this stuff. And these are like goodness of fits, uh, fits of like uh, different ones, right? Of this formula. What I'm using here is this one, is pseudo R square. It's basically the same, right? But it's calculated by another way. So it's not exactly the same. But in the overall, it's the same. Mainly, it is a number that has to be between zero and one. Zero is, well, the worst value possible. One is perfect fit. We have like 0.85. That is quite good. It's not perfect, but this is biology never going to be perfect, All right? So we're done with the treatment one. I'm going to do like the other treatments really fast. It's the, exactly the same thing. Um, the new one, the only thing that I just changed basically is the data number, All right? The same, the rest is the same. I need this calculation for the next part at least. Um, so we really have like this for, if you have a lot, I think that you can create a loop. In this case, it were for, so we just can copy and paste. And then 
I want to create a graph or a plot that show me the four um, the four curves together, right? The four like sigmoids for each treatment. And there is going to be a problem with that, right? Because if if I do that here, I'm going to put here will be the treatment, and this is going to be the M. And this is going to be the M here. Uh, and here. Yeah, I think it's done. All right, it's treatment. Uh, uh, and this is going to be. Uh, in transfer to this. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, should work. Sorry for that. All right. Uh, don't worry, you have to believe me. If I do that, the graph is going to be simply horrible, right? Um, why? Because it's not going to be really smooth. And it's not a way to fix that from here, OK? So the thing that we are going to do is create a new data, right? But instead of having like one point is two weeks, we're going to have a one point by day, right? But how are we are going to do that? We are going to do, first of all, we are going to make a grid or make like a new data point that is going to, a new data um, object called new data dry matter treatment one. We're going to use uh, here, predict for predict how will be each value in each point according to our function, right? And then we are going to put like a column called treatment, and it's going to be in this case treatment one. So we're going to run this, and we're going to run exactly the same, but for the rest of the treatments, all right? Basically, it's all the same. Beep, 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 beep. And then we're going to show all the new data that we create because we have a new data dry matter to uh, treatment one, three, seven, and nine. And I'm going to have like an one ace general, all right? And I'm going to remove the previous ones because we don't need it. So how is the new data? We're going to have a thing that is today. Oh, sorry, it's not like each one day is like each five days. We're going to have like the predict values, right? And the treatments of each values. So now we are going to run with the new data all this. Basically, what is we are doing is like this is called pipe, right? Uh, I don't remember our memory, but I think this is in the player uh, package. Basically, clearly, look at what you are saying with the pipe is like run everything that is here. You're going to split the data in treatments. You're going to map it, uh, these nonlinear regressions. And here you are already in ggplot2, right? You are not specifically saying, but you are in ggplot2. We're going to put Basically, it's a copy paste of the things that we were doing here. All right. Um, instead of dry matter, it's dry matter break values and the formula, the starting points, uh, trace through, allegory support, that's the same. Then, with the pipe, we're going to map the arguments 
and we're going to divide it by the treatments, right? And then, uh, and then uh, we're going to do the graph, right? With she she plots. And you you already know how is this? Uh, she online uh, the labs. A thing that I didn't explain is in this when we are doing these graphs. Uh, no, this one. These graphs. You have to put like a dry meter per hectare with a minus one. In these ones, you have to use the expression, right? Because it's working, that is working with a plot fit. So basically, you have I love equal expression within brackets, the things that you need to put, and then uh, out of the brackets, the formula. In this case, elevated uh, to the minus one. Okay, here that doesn't work. The most similar things that we have is Phuket. That is working more or less the same thing. Between square uh, square brackets, it's going to be the infra titles, and this is going to be the sub ones when you like put like elevated, right? Or exponential exponentiated or whatever. So we run this. It's going to take a bit of time. And here we have. So I'm going to show this big one. What we have here, we have like the four curves, right? Plotted in the same um graphs and this is allowing us to see some stuff basically what we're saying is that in this point is the day 32 or 33 more or less the treatment with nitrogen start to grow really fast and this is start to grow fast slower and you can say like okay here with some statistical analysis that do it is a uh, physiological moment in the crop or time that where the nitrogen is fundamental for the growing. So the nitrogen has to be here. So when you use urea, for example, you have to apply it or reapply it here because it's the critical moment. If you apply it here and then rains and the nitrates live, it's going to happen this. This physiological moment in the corn is P6. There are like a lot of proof of that. There are lots of stories of that as well. So it's kind of nice. Uh, the thing is like with the treatment tree, that we just apply nitrogen here uh, with a chicken liter. In this period, there wasn't like much deficiency of nitrogen. So that was something that was improved. And they start to have like some differences here. There is, if I mal do recall, B, uh, VR. There is one like it starts to put like the flowers, right? So, Herman, while you understand you're, that, while you're yep. showing this figure, could I just mm -hmm. ask you to? Um, may, I may have missed it. Um, <laughs> But um, you you kind of quickly went over what the different treatments are, and if oh. I if I just say in in words, it looks like your treatment one uh, doesn't have any fertilizer. And, yeah, it's here. And your three, seven, and nine have different kinds of fertilizer amounts and timings and types. Um, could you just walk us through that? Yeah, of course. I'm going to come back here. We here. Sorry, I'm going to just the treatment. Uh, well, what we did was a factorial combination of two doses of urea and two doses of chicken litter. Basically, the doses of urea was 0, 19, and 180, and the doses of chicken litter will be like 0, 180, 360 kilograms of nitrogen for area. 
totally tossing. Um, the agronomy on this group will be argued that 360 kilograms of nitrogen for hectare is a lot, and that's true, but we actually think that the mineralization in those soils uh, is really slow, and probably we are going to have, like, in the cycle of uh, the corn, less than a half of this. And we want it for, like, the model purposes, just to pass a bit of the recommended doses just to see what happened, because we, after that, I did like a lot of stuff here. So we make every combination possible, and we just study in the growing crops the four extreme, more extreme treatments. Treatment one, without any fertilizer. Treatment three, it will be a chicken litter applied two weeks before the sowing and integrated to the soil. Treatment seven, it will be just urea. I think that it was, it was 50 kilograms of urea in the sowing, and then the rest in the six. And then the combination of those, it will be the chicken litter two weeks after the sowing, 50 kilograms during the sowing, and then uh, 130 six okay so fairly complicated experiment you've shown us good but could you go back to r now and show us the yes. graph of the models and so if i'm interpreting this correctly um just eyeballing it it looks like the um the chicken litter application treatment seven uh and the Treatment uh, treatment one with no application. Now those those had obviously lower yields, and then the um, treatment uh, seven and nine had the uh, obviously the the highest and not really different from one another. Is that what you that's get? A, up? That's a thing that you didn't show it, uh, but we can do it. I did an analysis of bias of each point. I can show it here. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Uh, we need to go to the statistical evidence necessarily. I was just literally at a basic level trying to. Ah, uh, yeah. I what you're in. showing us. Uh, here. In, in this day, 44, sorry. We start to have like the difference between those ones. It will be here more or less. And then on the harvest, there was that different that you're saying. The treatments with urea, they were like the best ones. This was in the middle, that was just chicken litter. And the witness was the, the worst one. So here. Yeah, so I, I think, I mean, this is one of those things where um, a nice graph precludes the need for uh, complicated statistics. It tells the story itself, doesn't it? Yeah, the idea is looking at that for like um, more scientific reasons. I cannot just draw conclusion just to eyeball in like a graph. But I summarize the information. So yeah, I should do the analysis in each day just to confirm what was the graphic saying. Well, yeah. according to what like my uh, supervisor said. So well, yeah. If, if you want the evidence there, I'm just, uh, you know, for the sake of uh, the presentation, I was just making sure that I was understanding, but thank you. Oh, no, thank you. And then, well, that's it from the code. Let's go back here. Up, 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 up. So just for like a summary, these estimates are going to be substitute. Substitute. Yeah, it's going to substitute the letters here, and this is going to be the formula, All right? And with that, you can predict um, how it's going to be the dry matter on each respective day. 
in this treatment, right? The problem is like this is not going to be never a general formula. I don't think that once you calculate this, it's going to work in every case. It's just going to work in your specific case, but it's really useful to your experiment itself. It's really useful as well to draw a conclusion when is the critical moment to apply any treatment. That could be, well, in this case, a fertilizer. That could be an herbicide or whatever. Okay. Uh, well, that's it. It's just it's, this is not like the entire team, but it was like the picture with more of the staff member, including the baby. Um, that works in the project. Um, thank you. I don't know if you have any question about this. Yeah, thank you, Herman. Uh, let's let's open it up for questions. I guess the baby contributed by um, doing your R coding for you. Is that right? Uh, no, the R coding. <laughs> to be honest, we find out that there was a baby in her tummy when she faint in the field. We were like taking sample and she faked, we had to call the ambulance. And the ambulance said like, oh, you're pregnant. I was like, uh, oh, what? But I was doing in the harvest as well, in, inside of her, Patricia. But yeah, was quite a fun story. If you want fun stories about this group, he burns um, sulfuric acid during the experiment. And she went in a fire experiment as well. We don't have like these things that you have, like the risk assessments. So that kind of stuff happens a lot. So I appreciate your risk assessment, guys. Hirschmeck has asked, uh, can you share the script? Oh. And, and it was shared in the, in the um, chat, but I also will update the R page right after this. So the script will be up there. Um, okay. And Working in the field until you collapse uh, when you're pregnant. That's like um, a scene from uh, the that famous novel, The Good Earth, Pearl Buck. Um, yes. Can, can I ask, can I just confirm a few things? Now, this was your undergraduate yeah. um, research project. Is that right? Uh, yes, that was, according to my supervisor, the second one, because I had one and he died solidly during my thesis. My second one said, like, this is the least important part of my undergrad um, thesis. But this was just one part of your yeah. undergraduate research project. I'm just trying to put this into context here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let me show. You don't have to show. You could just uh, uh, okay. have a few other little questions. I'll follow up. So th this was just sort of one experiment, one chapter. Did did you have training to do um, nonlinear regression for your undergraduate program? Because it's it's fairly advanced uh, statistical analysis for your average undergraduate project. No, I didn't. Um, the problem was like I start the dissertation with uh, one supervisor that was really famous for his mathematical ability, and one statistician that after four months, I believe, uh, he showed me like the basis of R and then production, he actually lived to Germany because he had like a PhD scholarship there. Um, we lost trace of him. Um, my supervisor died in the moment that we received all the data. So no, I didn't have anything. I just learned this reading books and stuff. It took me a good three and a half months, I remember, to pull it out. Uh, yeah. So, but if I understand correctly, your your supervisors had um, some serious skills and interest in statistical methods and they yeah. encouraged you and supported you in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we designed the experiment together. Um, then when he died, I had to analyze the data by myself. Very impressive stuff. Um, Thank you. Hope that inspires uh, everyone else to see what can be accomplished. Um, any any final questions or comments for Herman? Thanks again, Herman. That's an excellent oh, presentation. You. Very worthy. Thanks again, and uh, 
you and I, just as an aside, we should uh, have a time to meet for your master's project because I'm expecting yes. much bigger and better uh, analysis than for your mere bachelor's project. Oh, and now I'm feeling the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This 